we've already looked at um, an example of the, where we talked that we could multiply both sides of an equation by something. Um, or we could also divide both sides of an equation by something because those are opposite operations. Um, the reason that we can do that is because multiplication is nothing more than just repeated addition. Um, so any these properties that apply to addition can also apply to multiplication because they it they truly are just an extension or multiplication is an extension of addition um, but this one is specifically called the multiplication property of equations when you multiply both sides of an equation by some number now this one we have 5x equals 20 well, here again, our, you know, our, our rules don't really change, though, even though we call it a different property. Our goal here is still to get the variable alone. We want to know x equals some number. Well, let's look at the equation as it is now. Right now, the x is not alone. If you look at it very carefully, we say, well, there's a 5 attached to it. Now, how are the 5 and the x attached? Well, they're attached through multiplication. This literally says 5 times x. Now we think of what's the opposite of that, or how do I undo that? The opposite of multiplying by 5 would be to divide by 5. If we do that to one side, we have to also do it to the other side. Now I know you're probably asking yourself, now wait a minute, this property said the multiplication property of equations, not the division property. but multiplying by one-fifth is the exact same thing as dividing by five. So technically we are multiplying, but we think of it as division. Now five divided by five, those cancel out. They technically don't cancel out. They um, Five divided by five is one, and one times x would be x. We kind of call it canceling out as sort of a shortcut. But now if I look at my equation, on the left-hand side, I simply have an x. And on the right-hand side, I have 20 divided by 5, which is 4. Now, we can check this just like we did the other problems. If I were to plug in a 4 in place of x, is 5 times 4 equal to 20? Absolutely it is, so that's the correct answer. In our next problem, we have negative 3 times z is equal to 12. Well, our goal here is still get the variable alone. We want to know what does z equal. Right now, z is being multiplied by negative 3. So the opposite of that would be to divide by negative 3. If I do it to the left side, I also have to do it to the right side. So now our dividing and multiplying by the same number is really just a 1. So on the left-hand side of the equal sign, we have z. And on the right-hand side, 12 divided by negative 3 is negative 4. And here again, we can double-check ourselves to make sure we're right. Negative 3 times negative 4 is, in fact, 12. So that is the correct answer. Now, this example, we have 7 times y equals negative 21. We should be getting pretty good at this by now. Our goal here is to get y alone. But right now, y is being multiplied times 7. The opposite of that would be to divide by 7. And if we do it to one side, we have to do it to the other, maintaining that balance. Now, we look at what we have left. On the left-hand side, we have y. And on the right-hand side, we have negative 21 divided by 7, which is negative 3. And here again, you could plug in the negative 3 is 7 times negative 3 equal to negative 21, and yes it is.